girl, Naz Perez, is joining us now um, from, of course, Rotten Tomatoes, where she hosts The Catch Up, covering the latest in the world of streaming, TV, and movies with a fresh perspective. For our favorite segment, Watch With Us. So let's do this right now. Oh, Hello. Oh, favorite, Alex. Favorite. Okay. I better not hear you say any other segments of your favorite after this. No. All right. Well, first of all, just got to remind you guys, RottenTomatoes.com, the place to be when you do not know what to watch. Just head over to RottenTomatoes.com. There's so much good stuff, like the best stuff out on Netflix right now, which I'm going to tell you about in a second. But, you know, now that we're entering fall, I know everyone's out there buying their pumpkin spice latte on September 1st. People think football. One of my favorite lists on our website right now are the 30 essential football movies to watch. So everything to get you ready and cozy for fall as far as like watching from your couch, Rotten Tomatoes has got your back. But let's talk about Netflix now because Netflix gave us a gift that is Sister Sister on Netflix out right now. Never knew how much we miss you. Oh my God, guys. Hey! All seasons of Sister Sister landed on Netflix September 1st among a number of black sitcoms. So thank you Netflix for doing that. It was in the top three when it first launched on the streaming service. Stars Tia and Tamara Mowry, which I think most everybody here knows, but if for some reason you don't know who they are, Tia and Tamara Mowry, they play twins who were separated at birth, both adopted. They run into each other at a shopping mall, discover that they're sisters, and then they move in together with their adoptive families. But I cannot talk about the show Sister, Sister, guys, without talking about the goddess that is Jackie Harry, who plays Lisa Landry, Tia's adoptive mom. This woman has made me laugh like no other person in the world. Her one-liners and jabs at Ray, like Tamara's adoptive dad, are just so good. Her comedic timing is impeccable. And I low-key forgot how she was basically the reason why I love this show. Um, I also love this show because representation matters. It's an American classic. It aired from 1994 to 1999. I feel like it needs to be seen by everyone, especially kids today. Also, guys, can we talk about the 90s fashion to die for? Their matching outfits, the collection of hats that Tia and Tamara wore were such a vibe. It is the most bingeable show available to us right now. And I think it'll just make you guys feel good on the inside. Also, like, fun fact, when it came out, I remember we had a kid in our neighborhood named Roger. And we would always be like, go home, Roger. (laughs) Until I started watching the show. So you guys got to check out Sister, Sister on Netflix, among a number of other Black comedies that are actually on Netflix right now and coming to Netflix, like Moesha, The Game, Girlfriends, The Parkers, Half and Half, One on One. So um, Netflix is a place to be right now. I just want to say that I'm so proud of Netflix because they are putting these shows up now that were part of my childhood. Um, Jack A. Harry is a legend. is an icon shout out to her because she follows me on twitter she has taste um and i just think that um she doesn't get her flowers enough and so i'm glad that netflix put sister sister on so that the younger kids like there are a lot of gen z uh I have a lot of Gen Z mutuals that are like, I've never seen Sister Sister before, but oh my God, Lisa is everything. I'm like, yes, you better know about Jack A. Harry. Bucket hats are back that Tia and Tamara wore. Speaking of the 90s fashion, those hats are back. So this is just on brand for 2020. So I I am so ready to go home Naz and watch Sister Sister. (laughs) (laughs) We can plan our, we can coordinate matching outfits and hats, Alex, and do like a Zoom for our shoot up. Yeah, I'm living and Courtney, I cannot believe that she follows you. Like that is honestly like everything. And I, I actually tweeted, you know, because it, like I said, it was like number three, right when it first came out on Netflix. I'm sure you guys all see it in your queue. But I remember um, reading her Twitter actually, and she was tweeting how excited she was that a whole new generation is going to get to enjoy this show. So I hope you guys take the time to binge Sister Sister. Well, what else can we watch on Netflix? Uh, there's something with Tom Holland and Robert Pattinson. Tell us. Yes. Oh my God. The amount of eye candy in what is called (laughs) Devil All the Time. So it's a movie that's coming out next week on Netflix. I have three words for you guys. Tom, Robert, and Bill, as in Tom Holland, Robert Pattinson, and Bill Skarsgård. So basically if Spider-Man, the Batman, and Pennywise all starred in a movie together, this would be it. So it's an upcoming Netflix original film. It's a psychological thriller, Southern Gothic drama, And it's an adaptation of Donald Ray Pollock's award-winning novel. So what's even cooler is that the author of this book, Donald Ray Pollock, he actually narrates the film, making this a really authentic experience if you love the book, which I think is pretty dope. 
The movie takes place over two decades. So it's between World War II and Vietnam. And it's about this boy named Arvin Russell, who's played by Tom Holland. And he's like this good Christian boy in a Bible town in Ohio. And how all these like sinister characters sort of converge around him as he fights evil forces that threaten him and his family. So Antonio Campos directs this film. He said so much about Robert Pattinson's performance and how he, I was reading an interview and he was saying that Robert Pattinson gets so into character that he felt like he was somewhat possessed and that there were so many great takes that didn't even make it into the film that just got me so excited because I think we all know Robert Pattinson is just like, it, we're like living in a Robert Pattinson renaissance. Like after The Lighthouse, he's in Tenet right now. He's going to be on this. He's going to be the Batman next year if that ever finishes production. <laughs> Hopefully if COVID just takes a rest. But basically why I'm recommending this to all of you is because, you know, we've had a lot of movies that have come to us through streaming but we haven't really had many star studded movies like this one so really yeah. don't sleep on it put it on your calendar maybe invite a friend over who's been safe and social distancing like i'm sure all of us have um and check out the devil all the time next week on netflix this is very exciting of course like you mentioned you know robert pattinson not filming batman anytime soon so if you need your robert pattinson fix we got to check out the devil all the time so i am here for it yeah I'm one, I'm gonna put a good thriller girl. That sounds good. Yeah, exactly. We we need some thrillers. We're entering fall. And also, yes, Alex, I don't like to go too long without taking a look at Robert Pattinson's jawline and just like admiring Love like the perfectness of it. You know, he's just like chiseled AF. <laughs> ah, I love it. All right. Well, uh we're moving over to Hulu, 1015, which I love this name. I mean, oh, how many times is First, before I start talking about the iconicness and just the greatness of what is Pen15 season two, I need to know, Alex and Courtney, like, do you guys love Pen15? Because I'm obsessed with Pen15. I you haven't know seen it, but our, we had a cameraman, we have a cameraman, Shambong Dave, right before the we went into quarantine, he was telling me about it, how much he loved it. So I'm glad that you're about to give the T-Tribe the info because I need a refresher. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Uh, so I'm excited to hear about it and definitely gonna gonna tune in. But I just love the name. Just it brings me back to childhood and, you know, passing notes in class like this is good. So tell us. Yeah, I'm not gonna explain what the name is. But if you guys just stare at it for a little while, I think it'll come to you. <laughs> So basically, I am related to a show more on a spiritual level than this one. If you know the, about the hype and hilarity that is Pen15, then you know Cosmo Magazine describes this as a rainbow gel pen in a sea of black and blue boring writing utensils. And that is so spot on. So Pen15 is created by comedic geniuses Maya Erskine and Anna Conkle. They're both 33 years old. But get this, they play 13-year-old middle school fictionalized versions of themselves in the seventh grade. The show takes place in the year 2000, which, come on, I mean, next to 1999, greatest year ever. And so they literally have braces, bowl cuts. They play themselves among 13-year-old actors, which just makes it so funny because they're 33. And the New York Times said that this is basically like reading a funny teenage diary, and I couldn't describe it any better. So season two picks up right where season one leaves off. But it just feels deeper. We get into like Maya's sense of not belonging, all the crushes she has in middle school. Anna's parents' divorce is a major story and a plot line this season. Um, and I just liked it because I felt like the season was a little more mature. I felt like they threw more money at it. I feel like the production quality was a little higher and it felt a little smarter. Uh, but there were so many cringeworthy, hilarious moments. Like I can't give too much away to you guys, but everything in this show, I'm just like, yes, this happened to me. Like in season one, they they um, they get aims and screen names, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, like I don't remember that. But in this season, they they basically go over to like some girl's house who's like rich and she had, her mom is like all the snacks, you know, like we all had that one friend who had like the pantry just stacked with all like the real like everything like chips ahoy like yeah. my mom never had that i always had like the generic version of everything i was like so annoyed <laughs> but um basically there's another scene where they're like shopping guys and they're like they find like this tommy hilfiger shirt and they're like is this real tommy and i'm like oh my god i remember this. <laughs> i remember when we were literally <laughs> it's Anyways, the last thing I want to share with you guys, I kind of have good news and bad news. So which one do you want first? Bad news first. Uh, the bad news first, yeah. <laughs> okay, the bad news first is we only get seven episodes next Friday when it premieres, but we get actually 14 episodes in total. So the last seven we're going to get in 2021. 
And um, mm. so, yeah, do not sleep on Pen15. It is my favorite. It's 93% fresh on the tomato meter, 88% average audience score, which is a big deal. People love this show, September 18th on Hulu. It sounds bingeable, yeah. Naz. Like, since they're yeah. cutting up the episodes like that, it sounds like it's something that you'll want to watch back to back to back to back. So I'm kind of excited about it. I might want to check that out this weekend. Yeah. Please, guys, please yeah. watch it. You'll just die laughing. It's so good. Wait, Naz, mm. dare I ask what your AIM screen name was? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, I, I you know, uh, contrary to popular belief, I'm very short. So it was short okay. stuff 2N. And it was two oh, because God. there were two in my family and my name started with N. <laughs> like it was, yeah. what was corn? <laughs> Mine was dark corn 11 because everyone called me corny instead of Courtney. So I just named my screen name was dark corn 11. Wait, and then when sick. I became like, uh, a cool popular teenager, then it became share the scandal. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're like, I have a ride. I'm alive in dark corn. <laughs> well, I think mine is the most embarrassing out of everyone. So, you know, Nelly, Nelly had hot in here. Well, I was XO, hottie in here, OX. Like that's, I don't even think that it should be allowed. But there you have it, guys. Huge Nelly fan, I guess. <laughs> I don't think I'm so hottie in here. Because yeah. he's back. Um, you were probably looking up those chat rooms, Alex. Mm, you know what? As I was a very good girl, like the name didn't really fit me. I followed all the rules, so, but it's embarrassing. I feel like everyone, when you talk about their AIM screen name, you just get the worst of people. You know what I mean? <laughs> you just get <laughs> most embarrassing. Um, okay. All right, well, let's move back. We're going back to Netflix for our next one, Ratched. This looks, this is my favorite one. I love this. Yes. Okay. So it's, it's Ratchet, and it's a prequel series to Ken Kesey's novel, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. So this show stars the dazzling Emmy Award winning and Ryan Murphy staple, Sarah Paulson, as the infamous nurse Mildred Ratchet. And the show is basically her origin story of how she goes from being a nurse to like a full fledged monster as she makes her way up the mental health care system. So what's really cool is that Nurse Ratchet is like one of the most iconic villains like in pop culture. And now we get to meet her younger version of Nurse Ratchet. Excuse me, I have to burp. This is so gross. All right, I am good. I'm here. So <laughs> this is really exciting because if we've learned anything from American Horror Story, guys, it's that Ryan Murphy will give us a very enticing thriller. And this one is on Netflix. And all I can tell you is that there are so many twists and turns. This is such a fun original story. My jaw dropped at the end of episode five. I will not tell you why. Um, but what's really cool is that Ryan Murphy actually mapped out a four season origin arc and the show's already been renewed for two seasons. So this is one that's going to stick around. You definitely want to watch it. Also, Sarah Paulson's Nurse Ratchet is set to face off against a different male adversary each season. It also stars Cynthia Nixon, AKA Miranda from Sex in the City, the iconic Sharon Stone. So as I'm sure as you guys can tell, a big reason why I love it, if you haven't guessed yet, is that this is a very stacked, strong female led cast. Um, also, the fourth season is supposed to blend in the Cuckoo's Nest narrative. So if you've never read it, now would be a really fun time to before the show comes out September 18th. You know what I love about this? I love Ryan Murphy and I watched the trailer. And what I love about him is you see something he creates and it looks the same. Like you just know exactly that it is a Ryan Murphy show. And of course, Sarah Paulson is an incredible actress. She is scary. Guys, teacher, if you haven't seen this trailer yet, it's eerie. So yeah. I am ready for it. This looks good. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, I had forgot. I didn't know the show existed until I was on Twitter one day, and I think I actually had seen Wesley retweet something or like tweet something about it. And so then you know me, I was like, well, what is Wesley talking about? And when I looked it up, I was like, oh, this is Paulson. Oh, this is going to be good. Because me and Wesley's taste is very similar. So I know if Wesley right. is very much about it, there's like a 95% chance that I'm also going to be about it. So the, also the fact that it's already been renewed, I'm watching. I'm watching. I will yeah. not be left off of the train. <laughs> I'm so excited for you guys. Also, like, Sarah Paulson is just one of those people that, like, <clears throat> when you hear that she's going to be in a show, you're like, oh, I got to watch that. Like, she just... She commits to roles that hard that you know you're in for a ride. And this one's definitely a thrilling ride. So don't miss out on Ratchet. All right. Okay. And then lastly, we are still sticking on Netflix. 
Enola Holmes. Is that the last one we're going with? Tell us about it. Yes, Enola Holmes, guys, comes out September 23rd on Netflix. It is 90% fresh on the tomato meter. This one is another movie. And the good news is, is that we don't have to wait until season four of Stranger Things to see our girl, Millie Bobby Brown. <clears throat> so Netflix recently tweeted out the first teaser trailer for Enola Holmes. It's a new movie produced by and starring Millie Bobby Brown as Enola. She's a 14-year-old sister of world-famous detective Sherlock Holmes. And the movie's about Enola's search for her missing mother and how she uses her skills to basically outsmart her big brother, Sherlock, and help a runaway lord. Her big brother, Sherlock, by the way, is played by Superman himself, Henry Cavill. So, huh, huh. And Helena Bonham Carter's in it as well. And she's just, to me, everything. But the film was actually, the reason why I'm super excited for this movie is that the film was directed by Harry Bradbeer, who recently worked on shows like Killing Eve and Fleabag. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Fleabag. Fleabag is literally, to me, one of the greatest shows on television. Um, it's on Amazon. But if you watch Fleabag and you know um, Phoebe Waller-Bridge very often breaks the fourth wall, she looks to the camera, makes jokes. So he's the same director, and Millie Bobby Brown does the same thing in this film. It's also based on the first of Nancy Springer's popular six part Enola Holmes, like young adult book series that she wrote. And what I love about this is it's just a fresh take on a popular world. Like we've all seen multiple movies on Sherlock Holmes. We've seen multiple renditions. It's fun to see Millie Bobby Brown put her talents to work on things aside from Stranger Things. I think this woman is just a force to be reckoned with. And I'm sort of on the edge of my seat whenever she picks a project. I'm like really excited to see what she's going to do with it. And I think this is one um, that we should definitely be looking forward to. So September 23rd. I'm excited about this. I'm not the biggest um, Stranger Things girl, but I do think that Millie Bobby Brown is really cool. So I do think that this is an opportunity for people that aren't on the Stranger Things UFO to sort of see her in a different light. So I'm actually definitely going to check this one out. It looks fun. I'm excited to see her in this. Also to see a different angle, like you said, of the Sherlock Holmes story. You know, we're bringing in his sister. So we don't really know what to expect. We're not as familiar with that. So this looks good. I, I love that. So subscribe. You know how this works. Uh, you know, let us know in the chat. What are you most excited to see out of all of Naz's recommendations? And of course, Naz, you can come anytime you want to give us oh, all the little streaming for my favorite, and it is segment watch with us. <laughs> Once again, we love you so much. And where can everyone find you? Yes. Well, thank you guys. Thanks, Alex and Courtney, for having me. I love you both equally as well. Um, so you guys can find me on all the Rotten Tomato social channels. Um, I host a show called The Ketchup and Binge Guide, where we talk about the latest and greatest in movies and TV. Also, you can hit me up on Instagram at Naz Perez. DM me. Let me know what you're watching. I also have my number in my Instagram bio. Text me. I love to know what everybody's watching, what people are excited or are about. And remember that you can always head to RottenTomatoes.com if you don't know what to watch. We got your back. Mm -hmm. But yeah, thanks, guys. I love you.